Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everyone. Hope you guys had a great week. I've had a pretty good week. Um, got some updates, but before I get to that, I've been lost, losing myself in this book on the way to work and back on the train. I got like almost an hour on the train, one way to work, and then another hour on the way back. So I've been buying up the time by reading some of these books. Um, this one, of course, by Mitch Steele of uh, currently working at Stone Brewing Company and uh, Brewing Techniques, Recipes and the Evolution of the IPA goes all the way back uh, 1600s um, even a little bit earlier uh, in the very beginning sort of jumping around in the different times and so I get a little bit lost I'm only maybe on the you know page 55 at this point um, got a lot of reading left to go uh, but so far first couple chapters pretty good um, very interesting. Um, it's got a lot of nice recipes in the back of the book, so I'm looking forward to uh, evaluating which one of those I'll brew first. Um, right, so in addition to that, um, I was talking with a bearded brewer uh, before Christmas, I think, on Uvu, and um, we were chit chatting about the IPA recipes and he was button heads with hockey player trying to figure out uh, uh, whether a book or not had the uh, Stones uh, 10th anniversary um, recipe. And it turns out he was right. Um, Beer Brewer. And anyways, he, uh, he brought up this book as well. Um, and he talked a lot about the recipes that were in here for the food, using beer, things like that. And I'm very interested in making beer, uh, obviously, but making food with beer and trying more of uh, that sort of uh, forte, you know, trying to get the, the right beers with the right food, that sort of thing. Um, so, bought that in order to uh, get that out of there. Um, so, talking about having a great week, I got lost in this book um, by none other than Chris White, um, yeah, Chris White from uh, White Labs, and also um, Jamil. Um, Zana Chef, I think that's how you say your name, from uh, Brewing TV fame. Not Fortune, fortunately, maybe, I don't know. So anyways, um, great book for a brewer, a uh, beginning brewer, getting started, finding out all about the yeast, because um, we just make the wort, the yeast makes the beer, right? Um, and to figure out this stuff is to figure out how to really make great beers. Um, I'm totally convinced of that now, um, so looking definitely to apply some of the knowledge I learned in this book in uh, my forthcoming brews. Something I haven't got to yet, but what will follow after the uh, evolution of the IPA book is the hops. Um, trying to get a little bit better understanding of hop utilization and um, obviously the different flavors. You can find the charts and the books and the this, the whole scale of what different hops sort of um, give you what different types of flavors, but this one I'm really looking forward to just diving in and learning a little bit more about um, them and uh, everything that they can do and how to best take advantage of them. So, right, um, so with the, uh, the two stone books, it's only kind of fitting that I uh, celebrate and my homebrew Wednesday with a nice uh, old guardian, just old old guardian. So 2012, I had one of these uh, a while back last year. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, I still got the pale ale uh, downstairs. I still got about half that batch left. Um, I don't really feel like drinking it. I'm just gonna kind of save it for uh, sharing. And uh, you know, I like things a little bit heavier. And this is definitely a little bit heavier. So, cheers. Ah, that's a good beer. <clears throat> um, so, everyone, maybe, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've traded beers with uh, a fellow here in Norway. His name is, uh, his channel is Rigo12345. Uh, he sent me up a couple beers, and I've sent him a couple beers to review. We've done the whole video review of each other's beers. 
and I had two of his bottles. And he sent me two pet bottles. And so, you know, what better way to send them back than full? So I got one full with my first all grain, my Columbus Pale Ale. That's right here. So that's coming down to you. I'm going to package this up right here. And then also my somewhat <laughs> psychologically botched uh, Pliny the Elder clone. So there we go. Just kind of uh, got the label offline and stuck it on there. So these are coming down to you. Um, we've chatted. Uh, we'll get them sent out within a week or so. All right. So what was the deal with the Pliny the Elder? <sighs> Thank you to Daft Cat Bruin. She was the only one that really clued me in on to what my problem was. And the problem was that I used the freaking refractometer to read what I thought would be a final gravity. Turns out it wasn't so great. And especially when it was setting out in my basement, which is about six, seven, eight degrees Celsius. So pretty cold. And that 1039, when I actually stuck a hydrometer into it the next day, it was 1010. So it was done. Fully attenuated, good to go. I should have just bottled it up when I was going to do it in the first place. So anyways, that's been bottled up for uh, a week now. I did it out last Thursday. And then I uh, just put it into cold storage for continuing conditioning uh, tonight. And uh, hopefully we'll try it again uh, next week, Easter. that would be a good time to try it. Um... Right, so I've got my Ratatouille IPA in the secondary. I've got it uh, dry hopping on about 100 grams of uh, Centennial Leaf Hops, uh, which that equates to about a little bit over 3 ounces. So that's what I did last time. Um, really enjoyed it last time. So I'm not going to add any of the Citra, any of the Simcoe. I'm just going to leave it on the Centennial Hops. And uh, hopefully the I use the, uh, the Centennial, the Simcoe and the Citra during the whirlpool after when I was boiling it. So uh, I think that'll be great. It's going to be great. All right. So that's all I've got. I hope you guys have a, a great, safe Easter weekend. Be safe, be kind, be good. Drink good beer. Take care, guys. Bye. Cheers.